I mean, the time and the, the this is not a wonderful part of the understanding visual impairment. Thank you so much, Tom Jazz. So we will proceed to our next session. This would be discussed by Dr. Sherwin and Dr. Jasmine Dean, and they are volunteers and low vision, volunteer low vision practitioner at Resource for the Blind since 2011, and they provide vision and eye care services at Kevin City. So may I welcome, and the topic would be understanding visual, visual impairment. Good morning, everyone. Blessed morning. morning, everyone, and uh, thanks for having us here. Uh, we are glad to start this uh, session, and then, uh, as always, we are eager to share this topic to everyone. So, before I begin, let me just introduce myself. So, I'm, I'm Dr. Sherwin, I'm an optometrist, uh, been a volunteer for our guys since 2011, so I started there as a, an intern. So, before before it was just like uh, handing patients there and then eventually I started uh, sharing this topic not just to teachers, to parents, even to parents, even to patients and then students in the commentary. So this morning, uh, hey, before, before anything else, let me just uh, also introduce to you uh, my wife, Dr. Jasmine. So she's also an optometrist and volunteer well, here as well. And there you go. So before we begin, um, let me just introduce the topic here. So supporting reading performance of learners with blindness and low vision. So I think we're set for one hour. Um, but if we manage to finish earlier than that, then maybe we can have some sort of uh, Q&A section. So if you have any questions. So let's begin. Right, so in this uh, session, we will discuss the following. So first, we will be uh, defining some terms. Right, so such as blindness, low vision, and then uh, we will be covering some common causes of visual impairment. So what are those conditions, and also eye diseases, that might lead to visual impairment and eventually probably blindness? We will be discussing what are the assessment and interventions uh, available for people with visual impairment. Um, although it might not be too technical, uh, but if in case you, know, you find it um, too hard to understand or maybe I'm going too fast, Sorry. going too fast, uh, please do let me know. And then also I will walk you through what are the different optical and non-optical devices that we uh, provide to our patients. So aside from the usual glasses that, that uh, people wear, in low vision we do have like magnifiers, 
Just like what Ms. Joyce mentioned earlier, uh, we do have assistive technology. So with the uh, technology nowadays, we use computers, we use cell phones to uh, help our patients with their daily activities or daily uh, lives. And then as teachers, I think the, the, this part right here is really, really important. So reading performance. So what's, what's the situation for a person or a student with visual impairment when it comes to reading? Are they reading like at the same level as those with normal sighted people? Or are, are, where are they at, at that point? And so we will be covering that. And then um, last topic will be the referral system. So in case you, know, you spotted someone with visual impairment, or let's say for example, you have a student with a visual impairment, where should you refer them, right? And uh, what are the possible um, cues or flags you know, that you can identify? So let's begin. So definition. First, let's start, what is visual impairment? Okay, it refers to the functional loss. So when we say functional loss, it means to be equating what? Fully balak ng paningin or partial. Right. So it, when we say partial, it can be like simple direct of vision, or maybe some people, like part of their field is already lost or balak na. Right. So before I move uh, further, uh, sino po dito yung nakawear ng glasses? Taas po ang kamay. Glasses. Ay, ang dami ah. Talaga mo si Magpagpas ang mga pictures. So sino dito yung uh, walang glasses pero malabo ang mata. Asa ka ba? Magpa-check na po ba yung soft topic next time? <laughs> Alright? So, uh, imagine, no, for us, normally sighted people, visual impairment, like for us, like, parang malabo ang mata during the vision. But, but for these people, when we say visual impairment, we're talking about people who cannot really read like large prints. So, may nagbabasa po, sobrang close sa face, ganyan. Talaga ganyan. So, para lang mabasa nila yung text. And on top of that, large print of view. Okay. So I think we have some photos to show later on. Okay. A patient may lose part or all the ability to see. So imagine, imagine your daily lifestyle so becomes suddenly na wala ang paningin. So how, how hard would that be? The impairment must still be present even with the use of eyeglasses, contact lens, medical, uh, medical interventions or surgery. So when we say visual impairment, or let's, let's use the term low vision. So it means that we've already provided the best classes, we've already provided the best contact lenses, we've already done the best surgeries, provided the best medicines, but still, they cannot see very well. Their vision is not at that level than a more regular person. So that's what we mean with visual impairment. I think we forward. So other important terminologies that you know, uh, might, might be good to know, uh, disability. Right, so this term is commonly used like among the low vision um, community because this is how we uh, identify, you know, the, the possible needs of our patients, of our clients. So when we say disability, it is defined as the umbrella term for impairments, activity, limitations, and participation restriction. So it's not simply like a person cannot do something. It's not as simple as that. So when we say disability, it means that there are some areas of their lives that are already affected by the vision problem. So for example, uh, because of the vision problem, they cannot go to work. They cannot breathe fast anymore. They cannot uh, walk alone by themselves. And that's what we mean by disability. Activity limitation, uh, I did mention of health or disability capturing long-standing limitations in performing usual activities. So when we say activity limitation, it means that on a daily living skills level, so there are some tasks you know, that that person cannot perform anymore because of the visual impairment. Okay, so you might be asking, why do we need a specific diet? Well, when we are communicating with our stakeholders, with teachers, you know, with ophthalmologists, with other healthcare professionals, we need to make sure that these terminologies all are well understood so we can avoid miscommunications, right? And then third, participation restriction. So when we say part participation restriction, it's, it's a level higher than activity limitation because it affects the overall well-being of that person, right? So that's where the pressure comes in. That's where the limitations of for finance comes in. 
in. So imagine your father, right, uh, with the children, suddenly, you got a visual impairment. Right? What do you think will happen? So aside from being like, a visually impaired, simply yung kanyang economic uh, power, kanyang finance ability, right, will be diminished with the God. So, so kumbaga, hindi lang siya affecting one person. When we say participation restriction, it affects, you know, even the, the people around that person with visual impairment. Okay? Now, uh, blindness. So then you know that if you Google blindness right now, or if you search it through the web, there will be several definitions of the world of the word blindness. And so usually, we know that blindness is bulag, walang paningin, walang imagination. But there are different types and levels of blindness. For example, color blindness. And so you cannot see, like you cannot see the, the colors very well. Uh, legal blindness, right? So usually we see government um, agencies. So for you to have, uh, for you to be given a PWP card, so you must be categorized as legally blind or visually impaired. And there are other definitions of blindness. Okay, but for this presentation, uh, when we say blindness, we mean defined as the lack of vision, right? So lack of vision. So now let's talk about low vision. Okay, same ba siya sa blindness? Is it the same as like blindness to vision? Well, it's not really exactly the same. Okay, so when we say no vision, it refers to the reduced ability to perform important life activities. So, meron pa lang impact no, sa daily lives ng ng tao. When we say no vision, it's not as simple as, you know, having more vision and that's it. Okay? So I think as teachers, as educators, we need to understand that visual impairment affects not only the vision, not only the learning of the students, but more importantly, the overall well-being of that student. No? Um, we have a lot experience as teachers na may sugante tayo nandun sa may classroom na kasquid na kaganyan. May ganun po ba may experience? May nakita? I think yes, no? Para meron may yan. Right? So, uh, yun po, normal, kumbaga, it can be dealt with normal needs with, for example, classes. And how about people with visual impairment and low vision? So, kumbaga, mas karabi pa mga natin, yung naran. So, what do you mean by important life activities? So, we mean enjoying and seeing visual images, okay? obtaining education, being employed, traveling and living independently. So, if a person looks, uh, you know, uh, a low vision. So all of these activities will be uh, reduced or uh, diminished no bababa sa nanarapig. Okay, ganun po katindi yung impact ng visual impairment or low vision sa ating mga students. So or not just students but for basically for everyone having visual impairment. Due to irreversible visual impairment which cannot be treated to a good level of vision even after medical, surgical, optical treatments are provided so yung pinanibalik natin Ay, so, ito po yung sinasabi ko, meron po tayong mga uh, mababayad po dito. Um, just to share with you, uh, teachers, so at RBI, we also visit provinces, okay? And then uh, remote places where you can provide assessment. Okay, there are people, imagine this, there are people who never had a chance to have their eyes checked. Okay. I met a guy uh, seven years old, oh, first time na check ang mata, seven years old, imagine that. So, you know, there's a lot of work that needs to be done when it comes to visual impairment. And it's not just us doctors, um, you know, I, I always, always advocate that it, it's always more of a partnership between us, between you, the teachers, the parents. So, let's keep in mind that if these people will not be identified, will not be managed properly, most of their lives will be limited now with their remaining vision in that state. Okay? So, it, first of all, it's an irreversible visual loss. Not irreversible? Yes, irreversible. It not be uh, what that 2020 vision will not have. Okay? That's, that's one fact that we need to establish. Right? And most people, when they hear irreversible vision loss, do not actually start on you, Manila, um, emotional, yung kanila, um, uh, emotional baggages. Some of them might feel depressed, shocked, 
some of them might even feel angry towards other people kasi ganun na nangyari sa kanila eyes. So, what I'm saying is that it's not just vision, it's, it's more like the overall well-being of that person. Okay? Uh, and we've already established this, right? That it will not affect the ability to perform the daily activities. Okay, next thing. Sino po ang nakakakilala ng chart na ito? As mo kamay. Ano? Ah, may nakabisado po ba ito nung last exam? <laughs> nakabisado? Hindi. Okay, huwag ka nakatingin sa malayo. So, ito po ay tinatawag na Snellian chart. No? This is the most popular visual chart or visual activity chart that, that most people know. Uh, but, just, just in FYI, hindi na po ito ang chart na ginagamit namin. So next time, nakupunta po kayo sa inyong optometrists at nagulat kayo iba ang chart. Ako po, hindi nyo nakabisado ang yari ko natin. <laughs> so, when we say best corrected visual acuity, again, we mean even with glasses, okay, even with the best lenses, even with contact lenses whatsoever, ang vision in the patient will only be up to here. Ito rin best. And that's it. Look, saan dyan ang 2029? Uh, yung 2029 sa baba kong red line, yan po yung dapat natin makita. So whenever we, we go for eye exams, dapat yan yung ma-achieve natin. So that we can say that we have 2020 vision or normal vision. Okay? So yun po. Ako, ang dami na yun. Makabisuhin ko lang next time. <laughs> okay, so makabisuhin ko Okay, so next time po, yeah, so just just uh, ask your, your optometrist, your eye doctor, the doc, what's my visual activity? So your doctor should advise you if it's 20 or 20, if not, then you might need to wear glasses, like that. So another possible um, condition for a person to be categorized as low vision is what we call your visual field dose. Okay. So when we say visual field does po, uh, it means that uh, yung ating periphery, yung ating paningin, no, uh, wala na po ito. So imagine, tingin po kayo sa matabi nyo halimbawa, tingin sa matabi, imagine na nakikita nyo na lang po yung mukha niya. Okay, yan. So the rest, wala na po yan. So may mga patient po tayo na possible na yan po na yung visual. No? So tunnel vision po ang tawag dyan. Okay. Right. So, uh, that is still visual. Next, we discuss elements of visual. So, what do we mean by elements of visual? So, these items okay, affect our vision. So, these items are present on our, on our surroundings every day. So, tignan niya natin ano, ano yan. So, first off, we have light. Okay. So, we know that without light, vision is not possible. Okay. Without light, vision is not possible. So, there are people, no? who might experience um, difficulty with their vision kapag sobrang liwanag o kaya sobrang dilim. So possible pala yun. Kaya hindi pala pwede dapat puro maliwanag lang kasi minsan sobrang masakit sa eyes. So light sensitive people or as we say, we call it glare, right? So next we have size. Okay, so we know that you know, for, for an object to be seen clearly, okay, to make it more visible, we may increase your size. Yan. So, meron po ba dito? Ito, hindi ko, hindi ko naman natakasin ang kamay. Meron po ba dito tumagamit ng phone, pero nilalakihan yung text. Para hindi nila yun. Ayun nila. Okay. Instead nila. Okay. So, size. Diba? Size. So, keep in mind teachers that there might be some students who may be present now or maybe in the near future that they might require larger texts. Okay. And then we have distance. So the basic rule for distance, like the general rule for distance, is that once we move the object closer, it becomes more visible, it becomes larger. And so, ano mo bang ibig sabihin doon? Ano mangyayari? So we mean, for us optometrists, low vision practitioners, we may use the elements of vision to improve no, the vision of our patients. Um, specifically for the students. So it means that there might be some advice coming from the eye care professional na dapat si student ko nakaupo sa first row. 
for that student to see clearly. Uh, dapat po yung student gagamit ng large print para makapagbasa ng maayos and stuff like that. Right? So we have, you know, we have lots and lots of examples to, to, to provide, but for the interest of time, we will just, uh, you know, uh, mention some. Next, we have color. Okay, so there are cases where you may use different colors to emphasize or to maximize your what your objects. No, uh, there are some people who might see red or more uh, visible than the rest of the colors. They may use red. Contrast. Okay, so contrast means the ability to perceive no your difference in, in colors or like levels there's an object, and it, it's heavily linked to mobility or your moving around. So may mga patients po, mayroon po mga visually impaired, hindi na nila ma-identify. For example, yung color na table has a same na brown na. But, now, uh, if, if someone with poor contrast will look at the table, parang may isa lang siya. So that's what we mean by contrast, no? for example. And next is position. So we may move an object you know, within the visual field to make it more visible. So you can Okay? Now, these are the different visual functions that we need to see clearly, we see normally. No? So, visual acuity, for example, you need now in clarity of vision. That's what we you know, test the minute we do the, the standard track. Stereopsis, ito po yung depth perception. The ability to, dip, to, to see the depth, or yung layo of one object or another. Visual field, again, yung lawak ng paningin. Contrast sensitivity means the ability to perceive again different light levels of objects, how dark, dark, black, and white, and color vision, how do we do that? Light adaptability. So, the ability to see clearly at different light levels. For example, sa conference room of clear vision, but how about when you go outside? Maga adjust yan agad yung eyes. Yan. Okay? And the visual perception is how we perceive things. So, again, this one, what we commonly observe about your students who have vision problems. So, sabi nga natin kanina, medyo nagsasquid sila ng ganyan. Right? So, if you spotted the student squinting, right? so usually they do ask the student, malina ba yung paningin? Um, kailangan ba lumapit sa board? And then most likely, you know, the next, next best step there is to refer that student to an eye care profession and right? to have their eyes tested. So again, early intervention po is always, always better because from there, we can provide effective management. Okay, so these are just some, some of the samples. Um, I recommend you take a photo. Like, uh, maybe, uh, I'm not sure if you will provide a copy, but these are examples of, of uh, behaviors, no? And then what are the possible er uh, elements of vision that affect it? For example, Bright color scene but no six shades of color. So may problem siya sa color vision. Cannot read uh, small prints. No? Uh, may problem siya sa clarity ng vision. Therefore, we can increase the size. And oh, so para lang po, meron tayong clue. No? Paano po natin medyo uh, i-handle yung, yung uh, ating student. Now let's go over the common causes of visual impairment. What are the possible conditions that might lead to visual impairment, and in some cases, even like this? So first, we have uncorrected refractive error. Ibig sabihin po, yung hindi na nakapagsalamin, possible magugulat, possible na magkaroon ng permanent visual impairment? Yes. Right? So, when we say refractive error, uh, kung na po, when someone uh, when someone sees clear at, at near, but uh, blurry at far, we call that person as near sighted. And when someone sees clear at far, but having, uh, having trouble seeing at near, we call that person far sighted. Okay? Uh, if someone po ang kanyang response ay para may shadows yung mga text, meron po mag ganang feeling, pag natatingin sa malayo, para may shades mo. DHD, and then sometimes may headaches, okay? Um, most likely the light inside the eye is scattered, okay? And, and it's possible for that person to have a stigmatism. And, okay, po. So, yun po yung refractive errors, right? So, we need to address those uh, either with glasses, with contact lenses, may iba doon, pwede ba surgery, laser, 
Well, it depends. Uh, you have to be a screen first uh, uh, for, for us to find out. Uh, but, but it's not for everyone. It, it needs to have a proper assessment. But yes, it is possible. Okay, congenital cataract. So imagine child being born. Okay, and then right there, then makita natin yung eyes. Meron na agad white sa gitna. So that's what we call congenital cataract. So yung lens inside the eye, it should be clear, but it's already opaque, white. So sad to say, there are cases where in your intervention, um, it's already too late, or masyado ng delay, that that child you know, already uh, suffered visual impairment. You know, instead of na basa sa na siya ng text, ang nangyari, pinagbasa siya ng braille. Later, I'm going to show you uh, what's the difference between braille, like uh, the tactile reading, and then visual reading in terms of speed. And so, kasi po, medyo uh, effective po po pag ayaw ka nilang learning to. But again, congenital cataract, that means that a child being born already has their lenses opaque. So it requires early intervention. I papalit ko yung lente, and then from there, uh, we correct, you know, we observe uh, regularly. Retinopathy of prematurity. So if a child is born uh, prematurely, so ilang po sa what, ilang po sa time, there's a chance that their eyes will be affected. Paano pong affected? So yung eyes po natin sa back part of the eye, we have the retina. Okay, that is like the film of the eye, right? So the retina should develop like normally over time. But in the case of retinopathy of prematurity, the retina you know, becomes damaged. And then eventually, depending on the, the, the case, the level, possible po na maging na yung ating, uh, ating baby dyan na yung student. So it depends, again, it depends on the stage. I, and then also your early intervention is very, very critical. Okay? So, bakit po natin kailangan malaman ito? Well, for, for awareness. And maybe who knows, okay? Maybe you might encounter a person, a family, who might be suffering from one of these conditions, and then, you know, you might be the key to refer them to like your professionals and get the management, the proper management. Starters disease, more of sa makikila po. When we say makikila, yung central visual, Ayan. So, tingin po muna sa akin. Ayan. So, pag tingin sa akin yung central vision, ayan. so that's, uh, that's uh, where Stargard's disease will be um, affected. No? So, mangyari po dyan, yung central vision po ng, ng tao will be impaired. Katulad po niya, hindi makita yung tignan. Pag nakatingin mo, wala na lang mukha. No? So, possible po yun. And then, retinitis pigmentosa. So, ito po, kapalik na lang, yung peripheral vision naman po, yung unti-unting nawawala. Alright? Um, let me give you an example. So, months ago, uh, there was a teacher who visited RBI, uh, Quezon City, and then that teacher you know, reported that she's not seeing very well. Uh, paano ba? Not very well. Vision is okay, but not very well. So it turns out that that teacher suffering from retinitis pigmentosa without, you know, without the assessment that hindi niya alam. So anong nangyari pala, naglalakad siya, hindi niya parang nakakapak siya ng, ng, ng steps na dito kasi hindi niya na makita ng motor. So ganun pala lang po yung possible nangyari sa retinitis pigmentosa. Alright, so again, early intervention po, important yan. Para po masimulan na ganyan yung management. Matulungan natin yung mga sana na nangyari. And glaucoma. Right. Raise of hands. Sino po dito ang aware? What is glaucoma? Raise of hands. Or maybe heard the word glaucoma somewhere. Ayun, meron po makita. Thank you. Yung glaucoma po, ibig sabihin, yung pressure po ng eyes masyadong mataas in most cases. That it damages the optic nerve sa likod ng mata. Okay? Once the optic nerve is damaged, okay, it is irreversible. So yan po ang lagi ko sinasabi. Once the optic nerve is damaged, it is irreversible. Kasi may mga cases po, may sabi ng glaucoma, hindi pa lang mag-check. Next visit, wala ko na. Okay, so ganun po ka grabe, pwede mangyari. Right? Um, ito pa na yung bata. Okay, meron po tinatawag na congenital glaucoma. Okay? Pagka pangalak pa lang ng bata, mataas na ganyan pressure ng eyes. And that might lead na ganyan yung visual impairment for blindness. Okay? Um, how do we assess? 
visual impairment cases and how do we provide and what management do we provide. Okay, so uh, low vision assessment it says here the provision of low vision care for children needs to be integrated within eye care, education, and rehabilitation services. So let me pause there on that. So when we say low vision care, we mean it's not just a check the in our eyes and that's it. So it needs to be integrated with how teachers are teaching the student. Okay, with how